On this Debaco University video, we're going to be looking at things that go beyond just disease that can infect plants. We're going to look at some abiotic issues which can also reduce yields and increase plant stresses. All right, so here we're going to look at common abiotic issues for cannabis plants, looking at abiotic factors being those non-living components of an ecosystem, wind, sunlight, soil, temperature, atmosphere, and water are just a few that fall under this category. It's not always a disease that causes a reduction in yield. So general abiotic characteristics. So typically symptoms will appear suddenly if it is an abiotic issue. A uniform pattern can also typically be observed, and it's though not common uh, to be only on a single plant, meaning not like you just have one plant that has an infection, you actually see many have this issue. Um, if you're growing more than one variety, it's possible for there to be a distinctive difference between varieties, though not always the case. Uh, lesions tend to have distinct lines of impact and not impacted tissue. So when these, we're looking at our lesions, they tend to have these kind of harsh lines versus if it was a disease, they can kind of have a spreading uh, appearance to them. Abiotic factors tend to have a little bit more of a harsher line associated with them. Now, what are some stresses? When we're looking at abiotic stresses, well, they can lead to secondary plant stresses. Heat, cold, heavy metals, nutrients, salinity, drought, flooding, all these can cause abiotic stresses that lead to secondary stresses on the plant. This is a result. This causes the damage to the plant that can be seen. All these factors, these secondary stresses can lead to cell death, accumulation survival, and other negative impacts. So looking at shoot-related abiotic diseases, what's occurring on the top of the plant? Well, heat can come from light, and that could be artificial, or even the sun can cause heat stress. There's also cold, which is a particularly concern early in the late uh, in outdoor growing. For indoor grows, watch the lights off temperature and be sure you're moderating that. Uh, there's another video here on Nabaku University looking at the relationship of frost, uh, which is cold damage on outdoor grown cannabis. Now, root zone abiotic stresses, uh, there are many. Uh, we see the nutrients. Oftentimes, growers will overfeed their plants, leading to nutrient toxicities, which is a plant stressor. There's heavy metals. This is tested in the final plant material, so be sure to know what your substrate and your inputs are, uh, so you're limiting the chance of having any potential heavy metal stress on your root structure. Salinity. This can happen with chemical or organic fertilizers, so be watchful for the, of this. Uh, in flushing plants, is advised to reduce the salt concentration if it does get to a level that is causing plant stress. Drought, which is sometimes not intentional, but be sure to check each plant to ensure the irrigation system you're using is fully functional, as well as flooding, which can be caused by damage to an irrigation line or simply overwatering plants. So be sure to get a feel for the substrate for each individual plant to make sure you're not over or under watering it. All these are kind of root zone stresses with the above ground stresses. Eliminating and being mindful of these and reducing these stresses on the plant will help improve plant efficiency as well as yield. 